the Lord just wanted us to just accomplish something here. Yeah. Uh, this service not to be one of those nights when we just come and we go through it, but uh, God wants to be glorified in this place. Yeah. Amen. I say God wants to be glorified in this place. Yes, he does. And uh, I intend to glorify him. I intend to praise him. I intend to worship him. And I don't know if you've lifted your hands yet and praised the Lord, but you should. Because that's obedience to God. Doesn't matter what your name is, how old you are, how young you are, you can praise God. You can glorify God. You can give him honor and you can give him glory because he is the God that we serve. And um, I know, I, I, I tried to perceive or feel uh, the mind of God because I, I just don't want to let my mind uh, be here and God's mind be absent. Yeah. I, I want to do what God would have me do. Yeah. I want God to let you do what God would have you do. Yes. Because vain worship is this. Vain worship are worshipers that gather together and accomplish nothing to please God. They please themselves, or they please no one at all, or it's empty what the Bible calls bodily exercise. It profited little. It's just a matter of exercise, but verse of worship, and Jesus spoke of vain worship. He said, in vain they do worship me. That means you can worship God in vain, doesn't it? It means that you can Worship is adoration. Worship is praise. Worship is glory to the deity. Well, that can be vain, or it can be righteous, or it can be right. It can be right in God's will. And I want tonight, oh, above all things, I prayed sitting there listening to them saying, uh, watching us give our offering, uh, coming into the service tonight. I prayed before I came across the street, Lord, somewhere in this meeting becomes so real to someone that they will find the answer to their dilemma, their need, their problem, uh, whether it's light, serious, whether it's a trivial thing to some, whether it's serious, but let your people find the answer tonight in serving you, walking with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I believe, I believe that every service should be a service where we leave and talk about it and say, my, wasn't God there? Yes. Didn't he yes. come in? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Do you believe that tonight? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. That every service yes. ought to be a service so it is so filled with joy and filled with uh, something called wisdom and from God and filled with understanding and, and we see where people change like ice melting uh, we see them melting before the Lord like a block of ice just melting down uh, giving way to God and they leave with purpose and passion and they leave with intent and desire and revelation and vision before God now that isn't that's not going to be an ordinary church friend. That is going to be, eventually, that church that does that, accomplishes that, is going to be the talk of the town. Yes. You won't be able to, you, you, you don't need to put advertising up for that kind of church. That, that kind of church draws people by the hundreds, starts with the dozens, increases to the hundreds, finally the thousands. They just keep coming because people will go where God is. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. People will go where God is. Yes. No. See, see, I'm not one of these sour, sour preachers that says nobody is hungry anymore to hear the gospel. Nobody's hungry to hear good preaching. Nobody's uh, hungry to hear good singing. Oh, friend, let's bring the good singing on. Somebody yeah. wants to hear it. Yeah. And let's, let's bring the good preaching on. Yeah. Somebody wants to hear it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I, I believe uh, that someone is hungry yeah. to still hear yeah. the gospel. Yeah. I said the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Yeah. Someone yeah. is still hungry yeah. to sit in a service where yeah. we worship God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Worship God. Yeah. We just worship God. Yeah. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Yeah. And, and 
we see lives changed. Like I said, the ice melting. Praise the name of the Lord. So there's many avenues of the scriptures to approach this from. God cares about the person that's have need here tonight. Now, everyone doesn't come to every service with a particular need. Sometimes I come and I am satisfied. I prayed up. Uh, if God didn't touch me with a special anointing, I'm going to be all right. The devil will not touch me when I come in, yeah. and he will not touch me when I go out. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on. Because I'm, I'm, I prayed before I come. I'm in a good condition. I'm not going to get upset with anybody. I'm not going to let anybody steal my victory. I'm not going to let anybody take my joy. I, I came in here all right, and I'm leaving all right. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Whether I, whether I explode heaven or heaven explodes me, it doesn't matter. I, I came in right. I'm going to leave right. Because God is in my heart. But there, everybody is in that way. So, and there's not a service we have that someone is not in that service with a need. A need to be satisfied. A need of some sin to be erased. Of uh, some loneliness. I talked to this gentleman today about the word loneliness and uh, how lonely people can be. And how lonely they are. And uh, People are lonely. Yes, some people are. And they're seeking companionship. And they find human companionship, but it doesn't satisfy the loneliness they have. Because if it's loneliness for Jesus Christ, no human on earth will satisfy them. It doesn't matter who they are. They can be fair in between or whatever. But they won't satisfy that. Because there's a hunger in the human spirit when you're hungry for Jesus to help you Nothing will satisfy you outside of let Jesus in right. and experience him in your heart. So you may be here tonight with that particular loneliness in your soul. I'm sure there may be. I, I, I know there is. Um, there's others that are here. Uh, they're, they're like a blank page. Nothing has been written on them in the purpose of God. You ever see a blank piece of paper? There's absolutely nothing on it. It just, it's just, it's just blank. There, there's anything there. Uh, you, you can't uh, say that's a written epistle. It isn't. Um, and there are people that come and they're in our services of worship, and they are a blank page, and they're waiting for God to write something on their heart, so they'll have something to say to the world. They're no longer nameless. They're no longer homeless. They're no longer a drifter. They're no longer just a person on the highway of life. They have something written in their spirit, in their heart. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a God that can take your blank page tonight, and he can write something on it. And it will say, I love you. Come into my house. Be my son. Let me clean you up. Let me wash you. Let me change you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you won't leave here a blank page. You won't leave here a person mediocre. There are people that are mediocre in life. They, they really have no level uh, above that of the humdrum, the routine, and they just can't find a real excitement about living. You don't have to be that way. You can leave here tonight with a no salvation, a no soul salvation that you know you once were lost. But you're not lost anymore. Amen. You're found. Praise Amen. the name Amen. of the Lord. You're not, you're not sin sick anymore. You're cured. You're not drifting by yourself on the highway of life. You found your vehicle to get in. Praise the name yeah. of the Lord. Call salvation. You got you get in the bus of salvation tonight. You once were out of it, but you can be in it tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Because every day. There's, uh, Jesus is still welcoming people home uh, to his house. Uh, so uh, what, what does God want with us tonight? Uh, are we here? Are we here with purpose? Are we, I said, are we here with purpose? Amen. I said, are we here with purpose? Amen. Is, is this a dynamic church tonight? Is this church alive and well tonight? Amen. 
Amen. See, see, that may be your problem. That may be why you have such a hang dog attitude about serving God. That may be why you just drift and somebody bucks you and says, Come on, I'll jerk you. Come on. Come on, serve the Lord. You let them jerk you a few feet and you get happy and excited for a minute and uh, you get, you know, I'm, I'm really going and suddenly you could care less. That may be your problem. And you're just, you're not a dynamic person. Uh, you're, you're mediocre. You don't have to be. Why don't you let God change you into the personality he wants you to be in? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you, you know, I can, I can always tell a mediocre person, uh, they always have an excuse why they cannot get up and serve God. That's right. Why they cannot get excited. Why they cannot praise the Lord. Yeah. Why they cannot go to church. Why they cannot worship. Why they cannot give. They always have some reason. Uh, and they, they, uh, sometimes it's, well, I'm not like them. Sometimes I'm just not like that. Uh, I just can't do it. I'm not able. Um, that's not me. That's them. That's not me. Get out of that. Don't you want to be changed? Uh, don't you want to be an exciting a Christian for the Lord? How many believe 12 men shook the world 2,000 years ago? You believe that? You believe their names was ordinary like mine, John? One of them was John? Uh, James? James? Peter? Uh, you, 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 you believe those men in Matthew? Uh, they shook the world. The Bible said they turned the world upside down. The Bible said the men which have turned the world upside down have come to our path. Right. I love that. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm still feeling the vibration of the Apostle Peter 2,000 years later. I'm still feeling the colorful personality of John 2,000 years later. Uh, they, they, those men not only shook that world, they shook my world. I've been affected by them. I've been changed by them. Praise the name of the Lord. And we're here tonight to do God's will. We're here to see this service accomplish what God wants it to accomplish. It may be that right now the Lord's burning a testimony in your soul. And if there's a space, get in. Be at Cape Canaveral sitting over there. Have the rocket booster ready to go. Praise the name of the Lord. If there's a window here tonight uh, and you've got a burning testimony about what Jesus has done, let's say lift off. Praise God. Amen. And, and get that testimony in. Get that song in. Because we're here to see someone come to God right. in some measure, in some way. This church is a place, it's an incubator of excitement, of the joy of the Lord, sins erased, salvation. This church is alive with flames of the fire of revival in it tonight because we are going higher and higher and higher. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost in me tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And see, see God, uh, God zero, Sister Betty, praise God, go ahead, go ahead, the, must have the wind of space open up there, praise God. And I want to thank everybody. Get the mic to her. And thank read you, everybody, Sister Betty. for praying for my son. He's doing better. Praise the Lord. He's on River Oxygen. And uh, there was a, one of the preachers or chaplain who had come out and had, was going to have prayer with him. And Brenda said, you don't need to pray for him. Said his pastor was here and done prayed for him. I did pray. So I he did didn't Lord. need you to pray for him. And, I and he, is, he is so happy. Praise God. To see Praise, God. Praise, Praise, God. God. Praise God. Praise God. He can get up and tries to dance. Praise God. It's good, so good. And I want to thank all of you for your prayers. And pray for me that the man that I have living with me, uh, he's a Catholic, full-blooded Catholic. Yes. So pray for him and for me to put up with him. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. 
We don't deserve that request, but we'll pray. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We, we'll pray. There's a, a somewhat of a mystery about that, but we'll pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I want to show you, uh, yes, but I want to say about her son. Brother Butch and I went in that room, and she, he didn't just exuberantly receive us, but he didn't reject us. Amen. Uh, Richard didn't reject us. Uh, but he didn't just exuberantly, hey, you're here, now let's have a band, strike up a band. But at the same time, he was courteous, and he, and we could feel that he honored us. Uh, but uh, we felt when we left there, and we spoke about it, that this man could get help from God. Yes. And he did get help from God, <laughs> and it's a miracle in his life. And I say praise God for the praise, praise God. God. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise I want to give you this quickly here. Uh, in the book of, of Genesis, uh, the 19th chapter, uh, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Yeah. That God doesn't have uh, worship for himself. 